morning from the beautiful town of Mount Pleasant. I first want to say that I um, really appreciate everything that the people of the town of Mount Pleasant are doing. Um, this is a hardship unlike any of us have experienced in our lifetime. The last time governments went through something like this was over a hundred years ago and um, none of us, Councilman Chapman or I, when we ran for office thought that we would be fighting a worldwide viral pandemic from this town hall. We thought we would be dealing with densities and building heights and zonings. But here we are fighting a life-threatening, proclaimed worldwide viral pandemic. And we're fighting an enemy that's characterized by three things. It's virulence, it's host, which is us, and its means of transmission. And without those three, this virus does not have a fighting chance. So the only thing that we can do from this town hall to fight this virus is to fight its means of transmission. And that's where we're enlisting all the people of the town of Mount Pleasant into our army to wage war against this virus. We are taking the fight to its means of transmission. Back during the uh, Gulf War, the first Gulf War, many of you weren't born then, General Colin Powell had a map and he showed where the enemy army was and he drew a line and he said, we're going to draw a line, we're going to cut it off and we're going to kill it. And we're going to cut off this virus and we're going to kill it. And it's going to stop because the, the people of Mount Pleasant are going to join me and join all the leadership of this town in fighting this virus through its means of transmission. This storm has hit. This is not like a hurricane that we are waiting to hit our shore and see where it might come from and then assess the damage afterwards. This storm is already here. As a matter of fact, today Roper St. Francis had its largest single one-day increase in confirmed cases. And I want to say again, this is about containment. There are three phases of fighting a virus like this, a, a pandemic like this. There's containment, there's treatment, and there's mitigation. And what we see on TV is a lot of treatment and mitigation, and those are necessary. You have to have hospital beds and ventilators and masks and all of those things. But we can right now step up our containment of this virus, and that's what we're doing today. Wars aren't won based on how many hospital beds or bandages you can provide. It's based on how you can take the fight to the enemy and stop the enemy in its tracks. And that's what I want us to do. Council and I will not call it a victory telling you after you contract COVID-19 that the government has secured extra beds and, and an extra ventilator for you so you can be hospitalized away from your family. We want to keep you home with your family now. That's what this action is all about. Being home with your family is, in general, the safest societal unit known in the history of mankind. And that is where we will find safety. As I posted on Facebook the other day, something that someone came up with, you're not stuck at home, you're safe at home. So I want everyone to be safe at home stay home and save a life. We will win this through containment. Weeks from now or a month from now, people may say, why did the town of Mount Pleasant take this action when I don't see a mass outbreak? Well, I pray in God's providence that there won't be a mass outbreak in the town of Mount Pleasant because we took these type of actions. Mount Pleasant has more confirmed cases now than the entire state of South Carolina had when schools were closed two weeks ago. Let me say that one more time. Mount Pleasant, our town, has more confirmed cases now than the entire state had when schools were closed two weeks ago. This is our last shot at containment. This is where we attack its means of transmittal. Stay home with your family. Stay safe with your family. We would rather attack through containment now for two weeks then limp along like this for months. I have spoken to countless business people, small businesses, big businesses, everybody's taking a hit now. I had one contact me directly yesterday and said, please do a stay at home proclamation. I would rather have two weeks 
of more of a hard shutdown than limp along like this well into the summer. This moment today is a credit to Mount Pleasant Town Council. They have listened to the citizens, they have given it consideration, and some have rethought their initial stance on a stay-at-home proclamation. They've listened to the people, I've spoken with them, there's enough support on this council to not uh, overturn this proclamation. They have character and they have wisdom. It takes a lot to say, I've thought about this, things have changed, I now have a different stance. I want to commend our council members for that. If not for them, I would not be taking this action today, and I'm proud to serve with them. I have given you this stay-at-home uh, proclamation. It is a proclamation by the mayor under our emergency powers, which was also favored by the council members that I spoke with, because unlike an act of council, a proclamation can be updated or changed this afternoon. And in fact, we had to do that with the first proclamation that came out two weeks ago. Um, it begins at 12.01 a.m. on Thursday and runs until April the 15th. It's a two-week stay-at-home proclamation. It extends um, the, the state of emergency that was declared two weeks ago also until April the 15th. Um, there are many things about it. One is it follows the essential businesses list template that is published by the Department of Homeland Security, which was embodied in our sister city of Charleston stay at home proclamation. We felt like the two ought to be as close as possible so that you don't have, for instance, spouses who live in either of our municipalities and one can go to work and the other can't. So we're trying to have consistency in this. It's our job to have consistency and leadership and not chaos in a time of crisis like this. One um, important thing that was added yesterday, and this is due to some of the protections that other nearby municipalities have, have uh, proclaimed, is that this puts a stop to short-term rentals for the period of this proclamation. And the reason for that is to comply with the governor's recent executive order that people from certain hotspot uh, states should self-quarantine. Well, we have um, evidence that there are over 500 short-term rentals operating in the town of Mount Pleasant. They're very different from a hotel where you check in and there's a clerk and there are people there and there's one exit there and that our police can help monitor that. Our police, when they ride down the street, they don't know what's a short-term rental and what's a private residence. So this takes actions to restrict short-term rentals. Um, I want to read a couple of things here. Um, before I get to that, if you are a business that is not on the list, and this will be sent out shortly, um, if you're not on the essential business list, there is an appeal process, and this will change. I spoke with Mayor Tecklenburg last night. They have updated their essential business list several times. We will do the same. If you think that you belong on the list that's published and you're not on there, you will see in our press release where you can contact the town, and we will try to work with you. And again, I want to say, this is not to hurt Mount Pleasant business. This is to get us through this crisis quicker and get business back on its feet quicker. Senator Larry Groom sends his support. He says, I fully support the town of Mount Pleasant and Mayor Haney's executive right to declare a state of emergency and to govern the affairs of the town in a manner that the mayor seems safe and appropriate in confronting the unprecedented and evolving public health threat. I call on Governor McMaster to acknowledge this right through executive orders in response to the COVID-19 statewide state of emergency. We thank Senator Grooms, who's, who's one of our senators for that. Council member Laura Hyatt could not be here today because she is working on the front lines and she asked me to read this statement. I support having the governor declare a stay at home order on Friday and she supported it on Friday and she supports one for the town of Mount Pleasant today. I was elected to represent our citizens and have overwhelmingly heard from them that this is a measure we must take to protect the health and welfare of our loved ones. Widespread community participation is the only way to successfully contain this disease. We must all aggressively follow the CDC guidelines. There are advances made practically daily with testing and possible treatments. Let us stay safe at home until they are broadly available to us. These will turn the tide. 
As a pharmacist, I am out working for the community, putting my own family at risk. Please stay at home for our health care providers who are out and making a difference. Let's all play an active role and do our part. Stay safe and stay positive. Laura Hyatt. And let me pick up on one of those points again. The number of confirmed cases itself or the number of hospitalizations is not the whole story. It's also the number of people, including your first responders and your health care workers, who, if they have been exposed, have to self-quarantine. With these numbers growing and us having more confirmed cases in our municipality than the state had when schools were shut down and shortly thereafter bars and restaurants, then surely this is not an extreme measure under these circumstances. We have to have a continuation of our critical uh, services. So far, we've able, been able to do that. But as these numbers grow, we risk exposure to our uh, first responders and our health care workers. This act of containment will hopefully help with that. Now I'd like to turn it over to Councilman Howard Chapman, who would like to share a few words. Howard. Thank you very much, Mayor, and good morning, everybody. I commend Mayor Haney for going the extra mile in this war against COVID-19. It takes a lot of guts to do this, and he's taken it upon his shoulders to put out that we want a stay-at-home proclamation. I've heard from a number of people, as has Councilmember Hyatt, stating that we need to have the stay-at-home in place. Stay at home is not a lockdown, as some people have called it in other places. It allows for essential businesses that the Department of Homeland Security suggests are needed. People can go to work if their offices are, are still working. People can go to the grocery store. They just can't congregate there. People can go to the drug store to get drugs. They can go to many other places that allows them to continue their normal daily life. What this does is it keeps people from congregating anywhere and everywhere, and it suggests, as the um, variable message signs on the highways, uh, there's one right outside uh, Town Hall here on uh, US 17. It says, stay at home. This, does, this essentially repeats that in the form of a proclamation by the mayor. As I said Friday, during our discussions of the uh, suggested uh, proclamation to the governor, I've heard from at least three physicians regarding the potential need for stay at home. One of them was a prominent pediatrician at the um, uh, Medical University Children's Hospital. Another, my own personal physician. Another, my son-in-law, who's a cardiologist up in Anderson. In all cases, they suggested very vehemently for a stay-at-home proclamation, uh, not only in Mount Pleasant, but also statewide. Um, I commend Mayor Haney for doing this, and I'm glad that uh, council has, uh, some of the council members have changed their mind after what, uh, what we did on Friday. Thank you very much. I want to also add that I am proud um, that, that through this and through the support of council, that uh, the people of Mount Pleasant can now be afforded, at least through containment, um, a level of protection that we see at the Isle of Palms, Sullivan's Island, the city of Charleston, Folly Beach, Edisto Beach, Greenville, South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, Williamsburg County, and the list may have grown. I think the city of Casey is getting ready to do it. I know that my good friend Mayor Greg Habib of Goose Creek wants one uh, statewide, and there are many others. So uh, we're all in this together. So this makes um, you know, three of the top 10 uh, cities by size in the state of South Carolina who now have a stay-at-home ordinance or proclamation. And uh, I think we're in good company. And uh, we did not do this lightly, especially after the Attorney General's opinion that came out last Friday that was somewhat softened um, by a subsequent addition to that on Saturday. And then if you saw on our local uh, news channel last night, 
Um, I think he, he pretty much let us know that if we're doing what we're doing to protect our citizens and we are doing it to try to effectuate the governor's uh, executive orders and not try to override them, that we're within our rights to do so and we stand on that and I've heard that back from council members as well.